What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be playing some Warwick in the mid lane. This is a commentary over a replay we just had. This is a low key, low elo carry pick. Um, we went against a Karthus in lane and we took for our runes Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Celerity, Water Walking, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. Um, the armor was mainly to counter the Caitlyn in the late game because Caitlyn can shred. Um, but really, this pick is early game, and if you can snowball, you can just 1v9 the game. Um, as you can see, we took Flash and Barrier. The Barrier is for the low, you know, the low level cheese. So if he was to all in us here, which Karthus is not, you know, obviously not a huge threat, especially early, um, you want to take. Um, either, honestly, you want to either take Barrier or um, Ignite, and we took we took Barrier for this reason. In the early game, you're really just wanting to farm um, and go for trades if you can. Against a Poke Champ like this, it's a little difficult. We'll open up our um, items. But this is a very good pick in low elo because not a lot of people know how to counter Warwick. Um, your Q heals you for a huge amount of damage. We went for a Q max this game. It heals you for a huge amount of damage um, or a huge amount of health compared to your damage the more you max it. So when you're going against these champions that just want to kind of poke you, one Q can heal you back to full, especially in the mid game. Uh, the W passive on Warwick. Let's see, we get a gank here. We obviously can't fight both of them this early. So we're just trying to get out. Use the flash to get out here. Um, get back to farming. But yeah, the W passive, um, once you get below a certain amount of health, you gain a move speed and attack speed towards an enemy. Um, you can also activate it early to get that move speed towards the enemy and that attack speed without them being below 50% health, which is a huge bonus. Your E, allows you to take reduced damage and then at the end of the cooldown that you can pop it recast it and it will f make your enemies flee and then your r is the the iconic warwick jump that suppresses the enemy and hits them um, rapidly again just playing it slow trying to get our levels um, we could be more aggressive than this. Karthus is very weak, but he did take exhaust. So we're just trying to play it careful. You do not want to fall behind on Warwick. You do not scale as well as uh, other champs. I go up here, uh, you know, I try to save, save the jungle, uh, but I'm not really able to do much. Again, you don't want to fall behind, so you don't want to risk it. Um, once you get that early lead though, you're, you're good to go and you can pretty much 1v9 carry games. We're trying to put the wave in. We get it into tower. As you can see, um, we're up in farm, which is pretty good on Warwick. Again, you have no wave clear early. A lot of people will rush TM at, but I don't believe it's the best. I believe it's best to get Blade of the Ruin King first at all times, um, just because of how Warwick's kit interacts. 
So we're going straight. We went and went ahead and bought the Vampiric Sep um, to get a little bit of life still on our autos uh, and keep working towards getting our, our, our Blade of the Rune King as, as quick as possible. We are level six, so we do have kill threat. Karthus is still not level six at this point. We are able to stop this dragon, which is very good for us. You can 1v1 anybody as Warwick. Um, yeah, and we just keep pushing our advantage. Able to get a, a nice little unofficial double kill on the Volley Bear and the Karthus. This sets us up to Snowball. At this point in the game, we are 2-0 and oh, up CS. Up 1 CS to Karthus, and we're going to have a good base to get towards our Blade of the Rune King. And once you have Blade of the Rune King, you can fight people like a Cho'Gath or a Volley Bear as they have with little to no problems. And as you can see, this wave clear is abysmal. You can use your Q to help speed it up, but you, you really don't have a lot of mana. Um, you can pick up a tier. We do pick up a tier this game. It does help with your mana issues, but it's not really efficient to upgrade it. Um, so you will have to sell it, or you can do a mana immune if you're just snowballing that hard, but I do not recommend a mana immune unless you're just out of control fed. So we're just going back to lane here. Uh, a good thing, you don't really have to rush tier two boots on Warwick. Um, on this base, we still didn't buy the tier two. We're still working towards the Bork. We bought a dagger and a pickaxe. Um, your W is really neat because it can work all the way from base. So if someone's below 50% health on the map, you can use that trail to get back to base super quick. So you really don't need to rush tier two boots. We're slowly inching towards the part of the game. Um, we're slowly, slowly reaching the end of lane phase and how we can start roaming and show you this chance roaming potential. Um, like I said, once you have an advantage, you really want to push it. So we're going to go down here and see if we can get anything done in the bot lane. A little skirmish going on. Use our R on the Caitlyn. Karthus ult, or able to pinch off um, a kill. The Diana gets it. The Soraka, we get the Caitlyn. Not sure what Volley Bear's doing here. It's kind of an imp play by him, but we're able to pick up the kill. And at this point in the game, we're at nine minutes in, and we are a 4-0 Warwick. Not much they can do at this point. It is a struggle for them. And this is where the game really takes off. We have our Blade of the Ruin King at nine minutes. Still on tier one boots, but that's perfectly fine. Again, with our W active and passive, we're able to speed up and get to people. And our lunge from our R. It's just a very mobile champion once you have those abilities up. The only thing in this game that I don't recommend doing is maxing your E second. We actually maxed our E second mainly by accident, to be honest with you. Your W is a much better max for your second max option um, because it gives you m more attack speed and more movement speed towards low health enemies. And the E just reduces incoming damage, but when you're putting out the amount of damage, you don't really need it. And I don't know what Volley Bear is doing there. Two autos takes him down to about 70% health. That's the power of Blade of the Rune King. It does max health, our current health damage. Um, we're not able to save our jungle here, unfortunately. But we are able to pinch off the kill and get the Karthus down. Another kill for a fed Warwick. Never a good idea if you're the enemy team.
You notice here I still am putting points in my Q. We've got the Q max now. So our one Q can heal us back to full from like half health or, le or less. Yeah, but I really do think this pick is very viable in low elos. Um, people obviously know how to counter this with, you know, buying the Oblivion Orb or, you know, Executioners to cut your heal early or your, your, to buy anti-heal earlier. But in these lower elos, it's very easy to snowball in 1v9. And if you get this far ahead, it doesn't matter what they do. So here we pop our W to get a speed up towards the enemies. Use our R on the Soraka and then go help Karma pinch off the kill on the Caitlyn. You always, in situations like that, you want to focus the support, especially if it's an enchanter, because you do not want the enchanter to just perma heal your, you know, if you're attacking the ADC and they're just, Sorak is just standing back there throwing her Ws, you could potentially lose that fight. We see we can't really do much uh, against that dragon fight. Um, you don't want to die. Even this far ahead, you want to make sure you, you play as smart as possible. So it's okay to give up that dragon. We're still in a very good spot at this point. So here we're just going to take a reset, see what we can buy. We're sitting at 6 0 and 2 still up farm and we've been roaming quite a bit so far. We're still beating Karthus in farm. Uh, we go ahead and get Merc Treads for the Karthus ult, the Karthus damage, the Volley Bear stun, the Caitlyn root, Soraka stun, all of that stuff. The only one I'm really worried about is the Caitlyn at this point because I know how she can scale and she went Dust Blade. She didn't even go the, the best option against the Warwick. So at this point in the game, I'm kind of like, you know, well, what what should I be doing here? Because I'm so far ahead. I want to try and push any way I can. And we see that the Cho'Gath is actually playing pretty well against this Darius. So we really want to we really want to get this Cho'Gath out of the game was our main goal here to roam up and kind of get him out of it. So we go ahead and chase after him. I didn't want to R here. I didn't want to waste my R because I knew that Diana was there to help me get the kill. So we didn't have to, all we had to do was chase him down and use our Q to pinch off the kill. The W passive let us kept, keep up with him. Um, yeah, really, really simple champion. The kit is very simple on Warwick. Anybody can play this champion. Um, you wanna avoid ranged matchups. Um, Karthus is kind of okay because he's so slow and so immobile. Um, do not play this into like a Vayne, Varus, Somebody that can just burst you down really quick and is able to, you know, get out and lock you down for long periods of time. We pop our W here. We see a fight going on down in the bot lane. We try to R the um, Soraka, but we hit the Volley Bear instead. He jumps in front and the Karma is able to pick both of those kills. So at 15 minutes, about 15 minutes in, we're up eight kills and we have a, about a 6,000 gold advantage on the enemy team. So we're, as a team, we're sitting pretty. Um, again, most of that is coming from, from me in the bot lane. Um, our bot lane's doing okay. Karma's got five kills. We're seven, oh, and three at this point in the game. And we're just gonna keep pushing, keep going. Um, you don't really fall off hard um, once you're this fed. You just keep pushing your advantage. The game will not go past 30 minutes nine times out of 10. Um, when you're this fed, the enemy team will just kind of give up. <laughs> so we see the Soraka roaming up by herself for some reason. So I just pop my W. 
and we Q at the end to get that kill. You see that did about 30% of her health with one Q. That's the power of maxing Q is you're able to pinch off those kills. <clears throat> Excuse me, this volley bear, not sure what he's doing, but we go ahead and help Diana pick off that, pick up that kill. We see Cho'Gath up here fighting. Everybody's flashing. It's a flash party in the top lane right now. We try and catch up with our W passive, but we don't want to get locked down under turret. So we back off. It's okay. You don't have to, you know, dive and int just to get kills, especially when you're already at eight. No. And as you can tell, we're not super far ahead in terms of levels. Um, we're only level 11 and they have a level 11 Cho'Gath on their team. I um, mean, we're only one level up on Karthus, but we have such a gold advantage from the kills that that's why we're able to get an item advantage. We don't really have an XP advantage, but you don't need it on Warwick. That's the beauty of the pick. The perma roam, help your other lanes get ahead. Just constantly be on the map, creating, you know, pressure on every lane. Karthus is spam pinging that I'm missing, obviously, because he knows that I can 1v1 their whole team. Here we see they're getting the dragon. Um, I think Diana is aware of that, but she's not able to get there, unfortunately, before the dragon is slain. That's okay. They're up two dragons to our one, but we again, we have such an advantage that it's really not the end of the world. <clears throat> just trying to grab whatever's out on the map. We get the scuttle just to kind of help us get some extra um, money. Extra gold for a buy. Yeah, right now we're sitting on Jack Shows and um, Blade of the Ruin King and Merc Treads. That's your core build. You could also, instead of Jack Shows first, you could go Bork into Ravenous Hydra or Titanic Hydra. Both of those are very good. Um, that's what we work towards next. But Jack Shows is good for survivability and tankiness and adding that extra bit of damage once you stack it up. Karthus is spam pinging. We go in here. We ult, again, the Soraka, because we know we've got the Soraka, and if we can lock her down, it is good. And then Caitlyn flashes, we flash. She hits us with a slow. But our W passive makes us run much faster than her. We Q and then auto her down. Pretty easy kill pickup for us. But you notice how I targeted the... You gotta notice how I targeted the Soraka in that fight. If I would have targeted the Caitlyn, the Soraka would have got away. And the, the Caitlyn could have possibly been healed enough to kill us all. You just gotta pay attention to the little things like that. It's target, you know not tunneling on who's lowest or who's closest you got to pick and choose your champions that you're going against pick and choose your targets wisely that goes with any champion but especially with a warwick so we base here see what we can pick up we go ahead and get our tier at this point we see our mana's going down or we've got a lead we get a tier a tiamat and a longsword so now we have a little bit of wave clear um we have a little bit of wave clear we can push waves in a little bit faster but at this point in the game it doesn't really matter we're 10 and 0 at 320 minutes we have no you know at this point we can pretty much just run and kill whoever we would like to obviously if we get in like a 1v5 where we're just soraka's healing we might not you know be able to pinch it all off but we see uh chogath up there he's obviously going to get away because of his Knock up. We see the Karthus down here trying to retreat, so we try and run down here and see if we can catch him. And we see Ash rotating up to help out in Karma as well. We pop our W to get the speed up towards him. When you activate your W, it gives you speed up towards the closest enemy. 
and they don't have to be at the low health. As you can see here, our autos are absolutely shredding. Um, Ash does pick up the kill, but we did most of the damage there. At this point, we just perma roam. Um, this is something that, you know, the game could technically be ended earlier. We could have just stayed in lane and just pushed down waves and 1v1 to everybody that came to our lane. But we missed our, we missed our ult there, but it landed us in a good spot. Able to lock down Caitlyn there and pinch off the kill. At this point, we're really still just trying to keep our lead growing, get as much gold as possible. We see Volley Bear here. There's not much he can do to us. Um, best case scenario, we can just honestly stand there and auto. We didn't even have to use our E. That's how far ahead we are. Um, and how good of a 1v1 champion Warwick truly is. We see Diana. Uh, we're trying to get a little greedy. We about di dive there. That could have been a huge throw. You just gotta pick and choose your battles. Even when you're ahead, you don't wanna give thousand gold shutdowns all over the place. We're up 7K gold at 22 minutes, 25 to 15. We see Cho'Gath and Darius over there fighting. We're gonna go help him out because at this point, Cho'Gath is six and two. He's, he's beating Darius. We've got to get him out of the game. He does a nice knock up to get us out of our R. Unfortunately, not able to catch up to him and get that kill there. We do hop over the wall here. You see how I'm fighting the Cho'Gath? I switch over because I see, oh, Soraka is taking, you know, she's healing. Um, she's healing Cho'Gath for all his health. And I knew that if I just kept fighting and autoing and trying to kill the Cho'Gath, the Soraka just could just keep throwing it. So we take our fear there, we flee him, and we just take him under turret. Not sure if this last turret shot was going to kill me, so I buried her. Did as you can see, we can just keep autoing. Back to full. Not actually back to full, but you know, the Q heals for so much and it's on like a two second, three second cooldown at this point. So we just stay up top. I realize, you know, this game's pretty much over. We just need to get pressure and get our turrets down. So I just stay top and get this turret. There's no threat to us in a 1v1 or a 1v2. Even really a 1v3 we could probably probably take at this point. But we still want to be somewhat careful. Games can switch with objective bounties and shut down gold. Games can change in the blink of an eye. Sitting on 14 and 0 and 5 at 25 minutes into the game. We see everybody rotating. You gotta understand that this is not a good fight. I'm pinging off our team to retreat, but it seems like they, they're not really paying too much attention to it. We're gonna take a base here, spend our gold. We bought Ravenous Hide right here. That's a huge, huge buy. We have a lot of wave clear, a lot of Omnivamp, good AD here. We're gonna stack it up and just keep terrorizing the map in my mind this game's over and i'm you know i'm asking why are they not you know surrendering but no idea so we also buy specter's cow to be little bit lead into a spirit visage um for all the the effectiveness of the healing that it gives us for our life steal and our q and everything like that as well as magic resist for the karthus 
for the Karthus, for the Cho'Gath, for some of Ollie's magic damage. So here we're just trying to apply pressure. Volleybear's coming in from the back. I'm not sure what his play there is. Um, he had no chance at doing anything there. Here we are, the Karthus. We pretty much kill him in one R and a Q. Um, not much they can do here. We need to focus Sor Soraka. We're not doing a good job of that, but we are able to chase down the Cho'Gath and get that kill. And I get exhausted here by the Soraka. So I just back off knowing that with exhaust and Caitlyn's kiting ability that she could really do some damage to us. So I back off there. Um, I'm looking at this point for something to heal off of. None of the camps are up. So I'm gonna run over to Diana's Raptors um, and just heal off them. One camp gets us back to full health, pretty overpowered. And that tier is really helping at this point. It's giving us about 300 extra mana to, to work with. So we're able to sustain a little bit longer in fights and not go um so quick. And you can see here the Ravenous Hydra, the Tiamat into the Ravenous Hydra really gives us some, some wave clear that we can work with. I run in here not knowing that there's, you know, four people three or four people there we did get volley's flash out of them which is kind of funny oh he didn't realize that i wasn't going to follow that in at this point in the game diana can just solo dragons while we apply pressure on the map and this is where we get our advantage for the dragons we were down 2-1 now we're up 3-2 on dragons we see the soraka running in we know we got to focus the soraka first we get the alt off, one alt into a Q. And we just auto her down and then Cho'Gath doesn't have a shot. So we just keep going. We use our fear on him here. And really he just doesn't have the damage. We just keep up our autos in Q. Volley Bear's down here trying to assassinate the Ash. We just get on top of them. We're getting Karma Hills, Karma Shields. We're just autoing. At this point, we're limit testing. We're just running at them. Um, Caitlyn does start to kind of do some damage here. I mean, she hits me with like two autos and I lose like 40% of my health there. So we understand that Caitlyn's still a problem. Even though she is only six and eight, she does have the Lord Doms for the armor pin as well as a collector. If she gets us low enough, we're, we're getting one shot. We just bought our full spirit visage. Um, at this point, the game is over. We we understand that. We just got to make sure that we don't throw, get a uh, you know an ace. They ace us and then uh, somehow get some pressure back on us. Normal games are not gonna last this long. Um, this team just didn't wanna give it up for some reason. I guess they're just thinking they can outscale us. But when you're so far ahead, I mean, we're 19 and 0 at this point. There's really not much falling off we can do unless it gets to the late, late game, which is just not gonna happen as long as we keep applying the pressure and, you know, putting ourselves in positions to get kills. So here I'm just, you know, running straight in there, trying to bait out some abilities. We're just running in using everything here we still have our r up we use it here to get off the car at this 
And that should be GG's here. We've got them all dead except for the um, Cho'Gath. And we down, down goes the Cho'Gath, and with that, that's going to be GG's. GG's well played. Um, again, this pick is very good in low elos, especially against melee matchups. Yon Yasuo, you know, those those picks. Even the bruisers and tanks, you just do so much max health damage, it's very good into them. Um, I'll show you the damage charts from this game. And yeah, we'll do the damage charts at the end here. And I'll also show you the scoreboard um, as well, so you can see the final score of everybody as well as the damage and everything. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.